this video demonstration, I'm going to show you how to make up the Summer Lantern from the new John Next Door collection. This is the die set that you get, you receive. It comes in the packaging, I should explain. So you've got the one large die here, which actually makes you the actual box itself. And you can use this and extend it to make octagonal boxes and all sorts of pieces. You then get two insert panel squares. And this is the same design, but they've been mirrored so that you've actually got two different looks to it, which is great for making cards and projects like that. You get two of the lines, which will give you a hole or a window into the lantern or box if you want to, or give you a panel that sits behind this of a different color. And then you get two of these top pieces, which will give you detail cut into the top. And the first demonstration I'm going to do is going to show you just how to make the box simply and cut it out as a whole piece. So here I've got a piece of A4 card and I'm actually using watercolour card. You could use watercolour card or a textured card for this. It gives a really nice finish to it. And all I need to do is just tape it down in a couple of places to secure it. And we need to run this through our die cutting machine. Now, you will need an A4 machine for this as it's a nearly full A4 sheet, as you can see but you have got space there, so you could put extra bits on there. So I'm just gonna run this through my machine. It doesn't need any sort of shim or anything. It will run through quite simply and easily. And once it's run through, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fold it up. So we'll let that go through a second. I'm going to use some power tape to seal this together. Um, and power tape is a very, very strong tape. I would suggest that you use either power tape or red liner tape or if you want to use a glue use a wet glue however if you use a wet glue you will need to clip it and peg it together so we've just cut the die and the reason i wanted to cut it and show you is because what you'll see is the die was designed so that you don't have to emboss it all of these fold lines are in and even on this 300 gsm card they're very very clear so to make the box up all we need to do is to make every fold and you don't need a bone folder you can just use your fingers and the die itself without being embossed will give you all of the fold lines so all i'm doing is folding these pieces each piece in to make sure i've got each piece folded same with the two little tabs on either side And we'll just fold these pieces up just like that. And then for the top, you'll see there's a scalloped piece and these can fold in or fold out. And on this first demonstration, I'm going to fold these pieces outwards. On the second demonstration, I will fold them in and show you them folded in. So we've got all of those pieces now folded. It's really simple. And now we just need to add tape. So what you want to do is to add your tape to your flaps. As I said, I'm using power tape. So use something like a power tape or a red line tape. And I actually just go across the whole thing and I use my scalpel just to cut it to size to fit those little pieces. I find that easier. I, I'll always look for lazier ways to do something. I'm going to put a little bit of tape on this flap here, but I'm not going to put any tape on this flap on the side, as I find it a lot easier to turn the piece over and put the tape here on the inside of the box. And when I put it together, you'll see how easily that will come together. So now all the folds are made. I just need to remove the protective cover from all of my tape and do this all at once. So all in one piece, really simply. It's far easier to have everything removed rather than start trying to pull pieces off halfway through. And we're going to start with this flat side piece here that's got the tape inside. Okay, fold all those pieces down and then fold this piece to there to give you your base and first corner. Fold your next piece in and match that up. You can see then it's a lot easier. We're just gonna fold that piece in, 
fold that one in, match up the piece on the base, and then we just simply put this section to here. And what you can do at this point is just take something like your pokey tool or a rule or something just to push that against. So we've got a nice solid square box and all our pieces come together. So to fix the top, here I've got a piece of um, Baker's twine in sort of gold and, um, and grey brownie colour. Never great with colours. So I'm just going to feed this through. And what you want to do, you want to start on the outside. So we go outside and then in. And you want to follow around on all four sides. Now, the die cuts out these holes at the top for you. And the reason for that is it means that these have actually been chamfered. So when you actually pull this together, no matter what weight of thread or cotton you're using, it won't pull the holes out because they've been die cut. So one difference between when a piece is die cut and when it's actually punched with a hole punch, it makes it a lot stronger. So I'm just gonna pull, let's pull some more of that round. So we've got it all together. And there we go. And I can simply then pull those into the middle, tie a bow, and nicely just chop off my ends. And again, you could finish these with sort of little charms on there and you can decorate this however you want. But you can see that I've got a beautiful little gift box or summer lantern, all put together very, very simply. So no problems whatsoever and very easily put together. The second demonstration, I want to show you how to use it with the panels. So once again, I'm going to take a piece of watercolour card and I'm going to cut the die. So I'm just going to simply cut the die, place it on, and we'll run it through our machine again. Now, it's really important that you don't try to put your panels through at the same time. Depending on the pressure of your machine, some machines will cut these, but as you can see, these are very delicate panels. So trying to cut everything in once can lead to disappointment. It's far easier to do it in the stages I'm doing now, which is by cutting my piece first. So let's get this out of the machine. So we'll take this out, really simple. There we go. And what you want to do before adding any other panels is just make the folds. And the reason is by running the machine or running the die cut piece back through the machine, you can press out some of these lines. So it makes sense just to make sure you've got all the lines pressed in first. You will have to do this again, but it will make it a lot easier to do. And this time I'm going to fold each of these pieces in to create a triangle. You see they'll easily fold even on this 300 GSM heavyweight card. They'll just pop in to give us a different look again. Okay, and I'll just take out any little bits, so any of these holes you've still got in there, take them out because they can move in the machine and mark your card. And you want to make sure your plates are nice and clear on this. So I want to put a design front and back. So I'm going to take one panel and pop it in the middle of the second square. I'm then going to take one of the triangles and pop that in the matching triangle at the top. A Little bit of tape and I'm just going to tape that down. I'm going to repeat that then here on the second piece and you can sit and and make sure and check you know your design and see right okay so that's the design identical that's it mirrored so if i turn that that way it means that i will have a mirrored look on the back pop that down with a little bit of tape to hold it in place while i get this triangle again i'm going to pop the triangle in and we're going to tape those down now we're asking our machines to cut a lot in quite a delicate place. So I'm going to bring my plates in here. 
I'm just going to take these pieces off. Make sure your plates are clean. But as you can see, I'm asking for a lot of detail to cut into quite complex card. That one's moved a little bit, so let's tape it down again. No harm. So what I'm going to do is to shim this. So I'm using the Crafts 2 Metal Shim just over the section where I've got all that detail. And what that will do is give me increased pressure in those places, making sure I get a really good bite through. And we'll run that through the machine and I'll show you again how it comes out once it's gone through the machine. So that's now run through. We'll take that off. We'll take our metal shim off. And we can turn it over and check and you see everything's cut through, which is exactly what we wanted, which is why we put the shim into there. So now I'll pop these off. And all you would do, and you'll see these easily pop out, even in this very thick 300 GSM card. I'm not going to spend all the time and make you watch doing that. I've got one here that I prepared earlier. So I've taken all of the pieces out. Just grab my glue eraser. It's got a little bit of a glue mark on there. And I've done the same thing again. Tape on these two flaps, this flap, and then on the inside, making sure I avoid the pattern. Okay, really simple. And again, just go through and make sure all your folds are nicely folded. And we're going to take off the tape. So we're going to take the tape off, just like that. And again, fold in, fold the base over, fold the next piece in, fold the base over, and then take the tape off there. I should have done that first. Again, Bring that piece over, cut it down, and bring that piece over and place it there. So now we've got our nice and sturdy box, and this time we just make sure we give those four pieces a really good fold in. And again, we're going to take a piece of ribbon, so I've got a length of ribbon in pink this time. And if you struggle feeding it through, take a little piece of normal sellotape and just wrap it round a few times. It's probably enough. Grab my scissors, we'll take that off. So we wrap the sellotape round a few times and cut it to a point. And it will stop the ribbon from fraying and give me a nice little point to go in. So again, this time from the front where it's decorated. There we go. I'll go for the one that isn't glued together. Through both holes through both holes, always from the outside in, through both holes, and if I can get that to go through, and through both holes, and we simply, let's trim that one off, I've gone a little bit mad with the length of ribbon, and again we just pull those up, just easing each time the little flaps into the center and you'll see when we pull it together this time we get the little lantern shape so again a little bit harder to seal so take your ribbon and put one knot and go around a second time doing that means that when you pull it together you get it into the right place you don't have to keep holding that it will secure it. That's why we put a double bow in. Bow around. I will make our little bow. And we could decorate that up with some flowers. Or we could put a tea light into there. We could use the square panels that are in the die set to cut some vellum to go behind if we wanted to. But that way we get a beautiful summer lantern. Perfect for sort of summer nights with tea light, electric battery powered ones. Obviously not lit ones or a little gift box perfect for a gift or a ring or anything so two different ideas made using the new john next door summer lantern 
For more hints, tips and inspiration, why not visit our Facebook group Crafting with John Next Door and Crafts 2.